The Class 507 and 508 EMUs, comprising the Merseyrail fleet, are fitted with the tight lock type automatic coupler. In this short program we'll look at the normal procedures for coupling and uncoupling units, as well as some emergency procedures. Let's begin by looking at the tight lock coupler in detail. The coupler head is very similar to the older Buckeye type, but has a stabilising horn at one side and a socket at the other. When the two couplers are engaged, the jaws of both couplers are locked by vertical locking pins. When required to uncouple, the locking pins in each coupler are lifted by the uncoupling mechanism here, to the right of the coupler head. This mechanism is normally air operated. However, the coupler can be manually unlocked by lifting the mechanism with the manual uncoupling bar. We'll look at how to do this later in the program. Below the coupler head is the electrical connection block with its rotating cover, under which are 43 electrical connecting pins, duplicated on each side. In the centre of this block, at the top and bottom, are two main reservoir air connections with rubber seals and star valves. Between them is a locating pin and a socket to ensure accurate alignment. To the right of the coupler, below the uncoupling mechanism, is the drum switch. Normally operated from within the cab, this drum switch has a couple position, the electrical pins in the coupler block are live, and the uncoupled position, the pins are dead. When making an attachment to another unit, stop six feet short and check that there is no non-multi-label displayed. If there is, it means you can't couple to this unit for technical reasons. If no such label is displayed, you can proceed with the coupling. Leave the driving position and examine both couplers. Check that both electrical connection block covers are fully closed, show no sign of damage, and that the blocks are level with each other. Check that the drum switches are in the uncoupled position. Check that at least one of the coupler jaws is open. Now return to the driving cab, ensure that all external doors are closed and draw up to the other unit, stopping two feet short. Make gentle contact to couple, applying the brake as soon as contact is made. Now take power as necessary in reverse to carry out the pull-away test. This will ensure that the couplers have locked together mechanically. Get down again and check that both butterfly indicators are visible. You should be able to see daylight between the butterfly and the coupler body. These indicators tell you that the coupler lock pins are properly engaged. With the master switch in the neutral position, press the couple button on the driving desk for a minimum 8 seconds. If possible, have another look checking that the drum switches are in the coupled position and that both butterfly indicators are still visible. You can now return to your cab, but before you shut down, check that the brake releases, all doors open, and that the unit takes power. Now you can switch off the headlights, markers and cab lights, and secure the cab. If the units pull apart when you carry out the pull-away test, check the couplers and electrical connection blocks, making sure they're aligned, before you try again. Try opening the jaws of both couplers. If the units still won't couple mechanically, try again from the other cab. Don't forget that standing on a curve can cause coupling problems. Try repositioning the units. You may need the signaller's permission to do this. If the units couple mechanically, the pull-away test is satisfactory, but the electrical connection fails, you won't be able to release or apply the brake on the other unit. Begin by checking the alignment of the electrical connection blocks. Are the covers fully clear? Check the position of both drum switches. They should be in the couple position. 
If you still can't release the brake, have a look at your fault finding charts. You may have an electrical fault on one of the units. When detaching from another unit, begin by ensuring that all external doors are closed and the main reservoir gauge is reading at least 5.2 bar. Then move the brake controller to step 3. Put the master switch in the neutral position, then press the uncouple button for at least 8 seconds. You may also need to reset the trip cock. It's in the cupboard below the offside window. Select reverse and move the unit back a few feet. Finally, visually check that the electrical connection block covers have fully closed. Set the head or tail lights on each unit as appropriate and set the trip cock on the unit you've uncoupled from. If the units fail to part when carrying out the normal uncoupling procedure, you'll need to ease up to reduce the coupler tension. Place the brake controller in step 1. The master switch in the forward position. Take power, then release the brake. You should feel the unit push into the other unit. Now move the brake controller back to step 1 and shut off power. Press the uncouple button again for 8 seconds and move the units apart. If the units still won't uncouple, you'll need to get the emergency uncoupling bar from the driving cab. However, before you go any further, remember that you may only go in between units where it's safe to do so, clear of any conductor rails. If there is a conductor rail, you'll need a current isolation. Begin by turning both drum switches to the uncoupled position. Then use the bar to smartly lift the uncoupling mechanism. Now you can move the units a few feet apart. Check that the electrical connection covers have fully closed. Finally, remember that if the uncouple button is pressed accidentally, for whatever reason, the units must be physically uncoupled, then recoupled. This is an imperative. If you require to couple to a failed unit for assistance purposes, It'll be necessary to maintain both drum switches in the uncouple position. When coupled in this condition, the main reservoir air connections on each coupler will be closed, so you'll need to obtain the emergency air hose from the offside cupboard. Plug one end into the Schrader valve on your unit, pass the hose over the couplers, and plug the other end into the Schrader valve on the failed unit. Don't forget to open each of the main reservoir air cocks behind the Schrader valves. Don't press the couple button when you return to the cab. In this condition your train may only run at a maximum of 5 miles per hour to clear the main line. <laughs> In the final part of this program, we'll look at some of the coupler defects to look out for. These are the most likely causes of problems when coupling or uncoupling two units. As we saw earlier, the air connections have rubber seals. If this seal is damaged or missing, a main reservoir air leak will occur if you couple to another unit. If any part of the coupler head or uncoupling mechanism is damaged or deformed, it may be impossible to couple or, worse still, the couplers may part in service. If the electrical connection block cover is damaged or fails to close fully or has a defective weather seal, electrical defects may occur on the train's control circuits. Broken contactor tips may also prevent certain on-train equipment from working properly. 
If the electrical connection block itself is damaged or misaligned, it will be impossible to achieve a proper attachment of two units. Finally, a non-split label in any intermediate cab tells you that these two units may not be uncoupled for technical reasons. The fault is noted on the label. Any defect found while coupling or uncoupling should be recorded in the vehicle defect book. Help the fitters by providing useful information. Is the defect on an A or B car? Is it a mechanical or an electrical problem? Do the drum switches move to the appropriate couple or uncouple position? Have the butterfly indicators operated correctly? Is either electrical connection block cover defective? This program is intended to highlight the coupling and uncoupling procedures for Merseyrail Class 507 and 508 EMUs. For more detailed information, you should consult the written publications or seek the advice of your operations inspector's team.